Minecraft is a game that can be quite hard to master. Because of this, there are many things that only pro players can do. So, today we're going to be taking a look at the things that only pros can do. Unfortunately, Sub, you are no pro, but I'm sure you'll try to at least resemble one. Strap on your diamond boots and grab your water bucket, because we're jumping right into it. Number 1. The MLG Water Bucket this is a trick that the pros use to not receive any fall damage. It's quite difficult, requiring both good timing and precision. MLG stands for Major League Gaming. In this case, it refers to the pro move of using a water bucket. This trick can be used when falling from any height, getting hotter the further they fall. Essentially, what needs to be done is that you place the water below your feet as you land. This takes quite good timing, but with a fair amount of practice, you can do it like the pros. Number 2. Building Complex Redstone Creations Redstone is likely the strongest tool in all of survival Minecraft. However, it can be an extremely daunting task to attempt to make anything out of redstone due to its extreme complexity. Because of this complexity, many experienced Minecraft players even stay far away from it. Sub, however, is quite the pro at redstone. After all, someone with this much Minecraft experience should surely know what he's doing. You've been working on that device for quite some time, Sub. Can I take a look at what it is? Oh, Sub. Number 3. Placing a block to land on as you fall. While there isn't a name for this that I know of, the technique is something very few players can say they have done. This technique can be a lifesaver in certain situations. This can be a fairly common occurrence in Sky Wars and Bed Wars. Due to the real possibility of getting launched into the void by an opponent, first, recognize that you're falling and spot the closest block surface. If you've been paying attention, you should already know where you're falling from. If you're lucky and have done it properly, you should land on top of the blocks you placed and not fall to your death. Give it a try and keep practicing. Number 4. Speed Bridging When bridging a divide, often players simply hold shift and place blocks behind them. However, this is quite slow, so surely pro players have techniques to speed up the process. The idea behind speed bridging is to let go of shift between blocks. The goal is to increase the overall speed to be as close as possible to walking speed instead of sneaking speed. This is important because while sneaking, the player's movement speed is only 1.3 blocks per second, while walking speed is 4.3 blocks per second. This means that an optimal speed bridge using this method is more than three times faster than regular bridging. In single player, it's mostly used Useless. But in anything competitive, any advantage is very important. Number 5. Diamond Blocks Used for Decoration Sub here is a bit of a noobish player sometimes. He's known to be a bit poor due to his bad habit of unfortunate deaths. However, pro players tend to avoid dying and due to this often have vast stockpiles of excess diamonds. Due to the mending enchantment, pro players pretty much never need new tools or armor, which leads to diamonds becoming next to useless. Once a pro player has gotten to this point, they're perfectly fine with using diamond blocks as a decorative block in their builds. With your help, someday Sub might actually get to the point where he can afford that too. Hit the subscribe button to help him out. Number 6. Real-Time Parkour Course One difficult yet highly useful skill that many pro players have is the ability to place down a parkour course in front of them as they run. What I mean by this is that they can adjust the terrain to fit their needs. For example, you see that lake behind you, Sub. It's quite shallow, isn't it? Well, what do you think would be the fastest way to traverse it? No, Sub, that isn't it. In fact, that's one of the slowest. You can only swim 2.2 blocks per second, which is far slower than 5.6 of sprint jumping. So that is exactly what to do. You need a sprint jump across the water, Sub. Just sprint jump forward, and then place a block below you to land on, and then repeat. Nice, you're getting the hang of it. Number 7. Making a Perimeter 
A perimeter is the outline of an object. In this case, a perimeter is a section of the world that has been prepared to ensure no mobs can spawn there. This is almost always with the purpose of increasing the spawn rates of mobs inside of a mob farm. Only pro players have the dedication to attempt such a project, as they normally must be an extremely large area. Often, the method used is to remove the entire world inside the perimeter, all the way down a bedrock. This can mean destroying millions of blocks, and is often done with the use of complex redstone machines. Because a perimeter is only really needed when making a huge farm, and due to the sheer amount of work that goes into it, pretty much only pro players can make them. Number 8. Aiming with a Bow Sure, anyone can aim with a bow, but only the pros can hit targets consistently at long range. Sub, you've been practicing for the last couple of hours trying to hone your skills. Well, you see that target about 50 blocks away. Well, have a go at it. Oh. Well, it seems you still have some more practicing to do before you'll be considered a pro archer. Keep at it, though. I'm sure you'll get better, sub. Number 9. Obtaining the How Did We Get Here? Advancement Minecraft has plenty of advancements, which can be quite difficult to get. However, none is harder than the How Did We Get Here? Advancement. To get it, you must have every single possible survival potion effect at the same time. Some of these are easy, such as strength or regeneration, which you can just brew yourself. However, some of the effects require specific mobs to be present. These include mining fatigue, wither, dolphin's grace, and levitation. In order to achieve this, you must capture a move a wither skeleton, dolphin, elder guardian, and skulker to the location you attempt this advancement. Besides these effects, you also need conduit power and haste, requiring a conduit and a full beacon. This setup is absolutely insane, and only the best of the best have ever gotten this advancement. Number 10. A Full Beacon Obtaining a full beacon is quite a difficult task. Well, it isn't necessarily something that only pros can do. It is quite a challenging feat that only a small percentage of players accomplish. To obtain the beacon, you must kill the Wither Boss, which means obtaining three Wither Skeleton Skulls. This isn't exactly a quick process. And due to it being in the Nether, isn't the safest process either. Once you've killed the Wither, you then need 164 blocks of valuables, such as iron, gold, or emeralds. While you could make a full diamond beacon, that would be a feat in itself. 164 blocks are quite a lot. 1,476 ingots to be exact. Number 11, beating the Ender Dragon. While well, this is the final boss, and ultimately somewhat of an ending to the game, a surprising amount of players never make it this far. While well, definitely this is not something that only pros can do, it is something that pros consistently do quite early into their playthrough of the game. A skilled player should really be able to achieve this milestone in less than 8 hours. Number 12. Swimming in Lava Pro players have mastered the skill of heat exchanging, so lava no longer phases them. Well, actually sub, pro players just remember to make fire resistance potions. This allows them to swim freely in lava for the duration of the potion. From what I've heard, it's quite a relaxing experience. You should try it sub. Uh, no, sub, I- Oh sub. Number 13, and crystals for combat. When it comes to the most powerful weapon for PvP, some might think it's a Sharpness 5 sword, others might say it's a Power 5 bow. However, in reality, the most powerful weapon is an end crystal. Pro players sometimes use end crystals for combat. They can only be placed on obsidian, so to use them in PvP, you place a block of obsidian next to the enemy, place the crystal on top, and then punch it. 
This can be done near instantly with practice and can one-hit kill players with full protection for diamond armor. However, another pro aspect of end crystal combat is that it requires loads of gas tiers to craft all of the crystals. To obtain the number of gas tiers required to make this a viable means of combat, you would very likely need to make some sort of gas farm. This would likely mean getting to the roof of the nether, a bit of a pro move in itself, and then constructing a large complex farm.